with your first news at 10 sports. Here's Jeff Roberts. The District 12 basketball tournament rolled on tonight with some of the state's boys basketball teams beginning their postseason. Bishop Ryan finished the regular season unbeaten in both the district and region. Tonight, they had our Redeemers in the district tournament. First quarter, Lions senior Brady Feller takes a handoff from Connor Thompson. He lets it fly from three. Feller had 25 tonight. Our Redeemers trailing by double digits in the second half. Colin Swenson finds Andrew Eby cutting to the basket, gets it off the glass, lays it in for two points. Bishop Ryan worked through a few different lineups tonight, allowed time for younger guys like freshman Hayden Say to hit three pointers. Lions led for all but the first 58 seconds. They won by 45. DLB finished the regular season with the most district wins. They had MLS tonight. First quarter, Lakers Mr. Basketball hopeful Carson Yale is up and down. A two-handed slam sets the tone. It's a nine-point lead. Mavericks lessen that gap in the second. Eli Unlin finds Cordell Soakvist for three. He hits it. Lakers trailed for just 19 seconds in the first quarter. Never let go of the lead after that. Rylan Olsen driving. Carson is there for the cleanup. It'll be the Lakers and the Lions in the District 12 title game. Other District 12 action from today, South Prairie wins by a penny more than Surrey wins. Other Class B action, Garrison wins at home for the second straight night. Imperials win by 14 over Kidder County in the District 6 tournament. The WDA basketball tournament is less than a week away. We would have known the eight teams for each boys and girls yesterday, but because of schedule changes this week, the play-in round ended up being stretched over two days, three yesterday, and three today. Mandan girls hosted Watford City for the 7-10 matchup. It was a tight one early on. Jessica Mogan's on the fast break. She has no one there to stop her. It's a two-point score. They're up 9-6. to six. Haley Markle for Mandan comes the other way, looking to take the lead. The lane parts. She hits the open layup for two points. That bucket forces a Watford City timeout. The Braves started to create some distance between themselves and the Wolves. Jaden Weiss slips around the screen, takes it to the cup. They led by five, and the Braves go on to win by nine. In the 6-11 game, Saints welcome the Coyotes. It was the home club that commanded the early lead. Ball worked to the near corner. Gabby Mann has space. It goes through. Saints started this game on an 11-0 run. Williston would answer with six straight. Off an inbound, Emma Shockley gets it, steps back, top of the key. It rattles through. That's still three points. St. Mary's, though, they continue to roll. Mickey Messer goes to work on the right wing, dances around the defender, gets position. It's off the high glass. 76-35 to 35 the final. St. Mary's keeps their season alive. So here's a look at the girls' quarterfinals beginning this Thursday at the event center. With Mandan's win, they will play in the third game of the day against number two Minot. St. Mary's will play BHS in game four of day one. The boys' bracket has the same top two seeds in Century and Minot. Belcourt won last night. They'll play in game one. Williston's play and win gives them a third game matchup with the Magi. And Jamestown, who just beat the Braves two days ago, has them again in game four. The girls' hockey regular season wrapped up today. Here's a look at next week's state tournament. Century sneaks in at the eight seed and will play Davies. Minot gets in at five and will see West Fargo United. Game three is an all-east affair. And day one of the tournament wraps up with the highest West region qualifier, Mandan, and Legacy Bismarck. The tournament runs Thursday through Saturday up in the Magic City. The Minot Magicians won six invites in nine duels this winter. With the recent history, they were the favorites heading into today's WDA swim meet. They won a with a team score of 448. Second place through fifth place was decided by less than 100 points. The state meet is next weekend right here in the capital city. For the second consecutive year, you Mary women's basketball is playing in the second round of the Northern Sun Conference Tournament. They were supposed to host in the first round this past Wednesday, but Wayne State didn't adjust travel plans with the weather. Because of that, the first round ended up being played at a neutral site down in Sioux Falls, and the Marauders made the most of that situation last night. 
Not even 24 hours after the win, they had a meeting with Minnesota State Mankato. Early on, Umary established inside presence. Addison Roselle, she had six points in the first half. Mo Hakim, she had the other inside presence all year and all night. She works it down to the block here. End of the night with nine points on a perfect three of three from the floor. A bit later, off an inbound, Riley Watcha. She finds her teammate, Reese Wisher, on the backdoor cut. We're rewarded with the easy two points. She had eight in the first half. Megan Voigt, she paced the scoring, 18 points for her, five threes, but after trailing only three points at the break, you marry season comes to an end. North Dakota State men's basketball wins on a buzzer beater at home over Western Illinois. The women win by eight on the road. Fighting Hawks played St. Thomas today, and the home team in both won. Trace and Eaglestaff had 13 points on five of seven shooting. Dickinson State men's basketball moves on to the North Star title game, and the women fall to Dakota State. And just wrapping up before this sports block, Fargo South Shanley, as well as Grand Forks Red River, triple overtime state championship in hockey. Well, awesome. Thanks for that, you Jeff, and we'll be right back.